We have a very valuable lesson going on this class period. Um, Michelle Campbell is a professional women's basketball player. Let's give her a round of applause for coming today. Talk about commitment and dedication. She just got off a plane from Mexico last night and she's here this morning just for you guys. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now let's give her 100% respect as you guys always do, but I'd like to introduce her to you. And as much as I tried to memorize this list of accolades, it, it would have taken me weeks. So I'm actually gonna look off of her website. Um, Michelle was a Gatorade Player of the Year in high school. Um, she was a student All-American, McDonald's All-American. She was New Jersey's Player of the Month, CVC Player of the Year three times, actual Player of the Year, a thousand point scorer in high school. She's in the Notre Dame Hall of Fame. She also went to Division I Rutgers University and played for Coach Stringer. Um, she was the captain of that team. Big East Most Improved Player. She was a thousand point scorer in college as well. Uh, she was a member of the Elite Eight and Sweet 16 team. And I'm gonna bypass a few of these just for time, but um, now in professional basketball, she played for the WNBA Chicago Sky, uh, WNBA East regular season champs. And she's also in the Euro League, which she'll talk about. But in the Turkish Basketball League, she was a leading scorer. All right, rebounder, she's a Turkish all-star. So she's gonna talk about a lot of her experiences. Um, I put up a few questions for her to, to talk about today that I think are really relevant to all of us. Whether you're in phys ed class, being an athlete in phys ed class, or you're a student athlete representing our school, I think you can really relate to a lot of these questions. So please listen closely, take it all in today. All right, give her your, your uh, best attention here. And then at the end, if you come up with a question, we save some time because I want it to be very relevant to you personally sitting here. So if you come up with a question, please save it for the end and uh, Michelle will be sure to, to answer it. All right, let's give her a big round of applause. Michelle Campbell. Hi guys. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go through the questions that she has up here and I just this is relevant to life not just if you play sports because I'm sure everybody here does not play sports so it is relevant actually to life as well okay all right <laughs> athletics academics and social life hmm. all right I'm not gonna lie when I got into college uh, freshman year I was so tired that uh, pretty much fell asleep in class so um, I had to figure out a way to get rid of that and not fall asleep. My coach said, you know, just go to class. If you fall asleep, at least you're there. But uh, I wasn't learning anything. GPA wasn't doing too well. So uh, I guess I decided to cut out the social life right then. Um, maybe that doesn't sound fun, but I couldn't do the social thing. Um, a lot of my friends were going out, having fun, doing things like that. But I had to get rid of that just until I got, you know, I guess accustomed to college life. So I would go to practice. And then I would go home to my dorm, I would sleep, I'd wake up, I'd go to class, come back, sleep, eat, do something whatever else, and then uh, do it all over again the next day, so. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> no, but that is what I did. Um, <laughs> but you have to remember that you can't play. Uh, sports, you can't really do a lot of activities if you don't have a GPA that is, I guess, the standard of your school. Um, ours was a 3.0 um, for, I guess, Rutgers, not the whole school, just for the basketball team. I guess we were held to higher standards because we were represented in the school. College recruiting. I think that was the best time that I've ever had because I didn't want to play soccer. I actually played, uh, I didn't want to play baseball, basketball. I played soccer with Dana, actually. Um, I never thought that I would play basketball. <laughs> yeah, we're actually pretty much the same age. We went to school together until I transferred to Notre Dame, so I did go to Lawrence. But, oh, no. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't like that. Uh, Notre Dame? Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, but um, honestly, the recruiting process was really good because I think that it just, it was all the work that I've done and all, all the hard work that I've done and everything just came full circle, so. It was, it was fun in the sense that everybody wanted me to go to their school, but then it was stressful in the sense that I had to make a decision. So, I mean, phone calls, mail every day. It was, it was, it was stressful, but it was actually really fun. Um, I ended up 
narrowing down. I pr I, when I say I got asked by every school in the nation, I really did get asked by every school in the nation. But I ended up narrowing down to five. Uh, Rutgers, UConn, NC State, University of Virginia, and Florida State. And then I ended up going on visits. I went to NC State, um, Rutgers, UVA. Was supposed to take UConn, but I ended up taking Rutgers because when I got there, they have like a video of the team throughout the year. And I actually, I don't know, I guess I felt it in my heart. So <laughs> I decided to go. No, it just felt like the right place. So I ended up going to Rutgers. Middle school to high school. Like I said, I played soccer. So I didn't really care about basketball at this point. So me going from middle school to high school, it didn't really matter about the basketball team, to be honest with you. But I ended up playing basketball because I didn't want to run two miles every day. <laughs> during soccer season. So that was a requirement, so I actually stopped playing soccer because I'm not a long distance runner, I'm a sprinter. So I decided, but distance is good for you though. You need to do distance to get your cardio up. <laughs> no, so I decided to play uh, basketball. I think probably sophomore year, junior year, I found out that I was actually pretty good in the sport. So um, I started practicing harder and I had my coach, Ann DeMille, as well as Phil Merlino and they really helped me to grow in the sport of basketball. Um, as well as my older sister, she played as well. She was a junior, I was a freshman, uh, and I guess I kind of, you know, I played over her, but you know, it was nice to have her there. And I played because she played. High school to college. I think the biggest change is being on your own because you're now responsible for every single thing that you do. So if I decide to go to class, that's on me. If I don't decide to go to class, that's as well on me as well. So if I don't go to class, I can't play. If I don't get good grades, I can't play. So every decision that I make is mine. As well as, I would say, eating. Um, the meals at college are, uh, there's a lot. And you can eat when you want, and you can eat what you want. So I think in college, nothing's monitored. So I think the diet part was actually very hard. Uh, also in college, I think the media. Um, I was around a lot of like ESPN, ABC. I mean, people wanted to meet me and talk to me. And I think those things made me very nervous because I am actually a very quiet person um, and I hadn't been used to that. So those things were very hard. Now going to professionally from college, I think it was hard because I didn't know where I was gonna play or who I was gonna play for. Uh, I didn't know how long I was gonna play and it's kinda like when you're in college, you're in a bubble. Um, things are pretty much taken care of for you. Um, you go to practice, you go to class. If you go to social life, that's fine. But when you're out in the professional world, it's, you're not playing for pride anymore. You're, more, you're playing for food on your table um, as well as everybody else. So when you have a job, somebody else is looking to take your job, you know, to feed their kids, to pay for their house, whatever it is. So, it's more of a competitive nature, as well as in high school and college, I think it's more friendly. Uh, when you get in the professional world, I mean, you make friends, of course, but uh, you know, at the same time, there's different agendas. Most successful team I've ever played on? I would say Rutgers is top. Um, that's because we were Big East champs, Big East regular season champs, Elite Eight. Um, Sweet 16, I, that was probably the most successful in the US. Outside of the US, um, I played for Galatasaray, which is a Turkish club. Um, it's the biggest European club, well, biggest club actually in the world. Um, if you look it up, it's, you would see what I, I'm talking about. Uh, we won everything. Uh, Turkish League, Turkish Champs, President's Cup, literally everything. Um, <laughs> But uh, I got to play with some really good players. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Diana Taurasi, Sylvia Fowles, um, who else is on my team? Epiphany Prince, uh, Penny Taylor, um, Danica Hodges, I don't know if you know her, Delisha Milton-Jones. I mean, that's like our, our, our starters and two coming off the bench. So uh, that's probably the most successful team. I'm glad that some of you guys know them. That's good. <laughs> Uh, and then probably WNBA-wise, um, Chicago Sky. We were the first, first time Chicago Sky has ever won so many games in a season, and first time we were the East season champs. So that was a good thing for them 
Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the Chicago Sky is one of the only teams that's not owned by the NBA. So it's, it was a big thing, big step for Chicago. Probably high school, college, even some a little bit in professional. Um, high school was more so that I didn't know that I could play basketball. And uh, I didn't really want to play. And I think the coach pushed me to play and to play hard. And I think that's something that's been a little lost, I think, in generations uh, coming up. Started with my younger sister's generation, which she's 25, so 25 and down if you're under 25. I think that working hard is the only way that you're gonna get to the next level. Um, at the end of the day, I, my motto is always is, and I always tell my little sister is uh, in professional world, there's many people who can do what I do. There's other girls who can do the exact same thing I do. What sets me apart is that I work a lot harder than them and I have a better attitude. So, working hard, and probably college was the biggest time a coach was on me. Um, <laughs> I guess in college they try to break you down to build you back up. Um, I think that it made me actually a lot stronger, um, and it made me actually the player I am now. And I think when I go out in the professional world, it's easier to play against players who are big names and you know they're supposed to be unstoppable because of my college experience. So I'm not afraid to play against anybody. Um, I try to provide positive leadership by doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, if I lead by example, if I lead by example, then um, you can't really say anything to me. If I'm telling you to do something and I'm not doing it, then you can say something to me by all means. Um, if you lead by example, you never have a problem. <laughs> I have a very active father. Uh, Dana knows. <laughs> he was actually our coach. He was our coach. So, no, I have a very active father um, and mother as well. They both love me, love me to death. But, uh, you know, I had to sit down with them and just, you know, let them know, you know, you just got to let them know this bothers me, this doesn't bother me, it's affecting my play and things like that. And I think usually it all goes away. If not... I mean, if you don't really want to play, you don't have to play, but I think sitting down with them usually helps out in that aspect. Do any of you work out? No. Raise your hand if you work out, really? That's like a quarter of you in this room. That is not good. <laughs> really? Okay. Oh. All right. So, anyway, working out is part of sport, guys. All right, working out is part of the sport. Um, I'm gonna tell you what my average training session is like. All right. <laughs> You're gonna probably think I'm really crazy. All right, I normally wake up uh, probably about five. I'm in the gym about 5.30. 5.30 to 7.30. I'm usually playing pickup and doing a little cardio. After that, I usually get breakfast. Um, and then I'm back in the gym about 10 o'clock, uh, lifting weights and running. So that takes about an hour there. Uh, for the rest of the day, I do what I have to do. And about 5.30 at night, I'm in the gym shooting for about an hour. So this is uh, my schedule. This is not everybody's schedule. However, it's something that's necessary to get better. Um, when I'm overseas, we practice twice a day. So we practice in the morning 10 to 12. And then um, at nighttime, we usually practice six to eight or whatever it is. So that's pretty much about four hours a day. Um, off season wise, okay, what I told you the first thing, the first the three times a day, that's off season. In season, it's about two times a day. Once game starts, it's about two hours a day. Um, now all this, like I said before, it comes with diet. So if you're practicing four hours a day and eating Burger King and McDonald's and all this stuff, it's not gonna help. It's not gonna work. You might as well just not work out, okay? <laughs> so, but no, you honestly, when you eat better, you feel better. And um, you'll feel a lot better during practices and you won't be so tired as well. So, practice is very important. Off seasons when you get better. Um, during the season, you don't really have time to focus on the things that you need to focus on. So, if you focus on those during the off season, you can perfect them, I guess, in season. What's it like playing like in the Turkish league. Like, do other people speak different languages or is like all one language? 
<laughs> he asked, what's it like playing in the Turkish league and the languages? Um, in Turkey, they speak Arabic as well as Turkish. Um, I speak Turkish, so I can understand it. Miraba, that's high. <laughs> no, they, um, there's a lot of places that speak English. Istanbul is one of the uh, biggest countries. Uh, I mean, Turkey is one of the biggest countries. Istanbul is a huge city, so they speak English a lot. So it's not hard to understand. Playing there? That's what you asked. Um, it's great. I mean, in Turkey, we ha our stadium probably holds about 14,000. We fill it pretty much every game. Would you rather play there or like in a professional league? Well, like the WNBA. I prefer to play overseas. And they're both professional. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, well, I have three questions. How's the food in Turkey? Is the food good? <laughs> Funny thing, actually it's hard to find turkey in Turkey. But yeah, they really don't carry it. No, um, it, it's great. It's like uh, West Indian food. Uh, so it, it's actually really, really good. I said three, that's one. Yeah, okay, that's one. Um, how, like how often, like you say you shoot like every day, how often? How many shots do you take and what's your? I don't count shots, I count makes. How, okay, how many makes do you make? <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> no, I count makes. Um, I would say probably close to about 500 makes. And um, it's important that you count makes because if you shoot, you're shooting for no reason. Can you dunk? Can I dunk? <laughs> In high school, I could grab the rim. I can no longer do that. I'm a little bit older now, so no. <laughs> How tall are you? I'm 6'2". <laughs> yes. Not anymore. And DJ, I'm going to piggyback on that question. That's a good question. So she's 6'2". So can you talk us through what position you played in high school? what position you played in college, and now what position you play professionally. So this is really important. In high school, I played the five. College, I played the five my freshman, sophomore-ish year. Four um, the rest of the season, and now I'm a 4-3. Meaning I'm a, a big guard and a power forward. So I'm on the wing as well as under the basket sometime. I'm actually undersized. What are your plans on the WNBA? Good question. Um, this is part of my plan, speaking to kids, or sorry, young adults, <laughs> about the future, uh, just about things that I do, as well as starting camps. Um, and I'm actually, me and one of my teammates are building um, a facility in Nigeria as well for um, some girls as well. So things like that, community stuff. Yeah, do you hang out with like any of the guys in the NBA? <laughs> do I hang out with any of the guys in the NBA? <laughs> yes, I have friends that are in the NBA, yes. No names. No, I mean, I know a lot of guys in the NBA. Guys, we, WNBA, NBA, we work very closely together. So we do meet each other. And when we do play overseas, they, some of them play as well. So yes, we do hang out together. OK, she has my inspiration to keep going. Um, I think it's, <laughs> I mean, it's not just the love of basketball, because honestly, people, people say they love the sport so much. And uh, they never have a day that they don't want to play. That's not true. I think everybody has a moment in time where they don't want to play. I think what inspires me is I just want to succeed. I want to be successful. And uh, success for everybody means something different. But for me, it is um, to accomplish as many things as I can and um, to prove as many people wrong as I can. And I think that's why I keep going, as well as there's a lot of people who look up to me. Uh, the main one is my little sister, so I got to do what I got to do to make sure I do the right things. Uh, yes, good question. Have I ever been in a slump? What did I do to overcome it? Um, probably about one, two, three, four years ago, 
I was probably about to not play. And I think that was because um, I wasn't progressing as quickly as I wanted to. And what got me over that slump would be my family. Um, they talked to me and just asked me, why do I love the sport? Why did I keep playing the sport? And what do I still want to accomplish? And all those things stayed the same. I still wanted to accomplish many things. And just through that time, I got over it and decided to keep playing. Does that answer your question? Okay. How many injuries have you gotten from playing? Um, I've been blessed. How many injuries, he asked. I've actually been blessed. Um, I've had one major injury, and that's uh, back surgery. How long did it take me to recover from my back injury? I had six months of intense rehab. I don't know if you guys know about backs, but uh, I had three herniated discs on um, my lower back. So when I say herniated, that means that my whole right side pretty much went dead. So I had no control over my right side of my body. So I had six months of intense rehab. Um, probably that's, I was back on the court after six months playing, not as much as I used to. So probably about a year and I'm actually still recovering. So it's something that's an ongoing thing. It never, you never, once you have a back injury, you never can uh, honestly stop working on it. So that's why when people say work your core and do your abs and work your back and honestly your butt, it's very important. Have you ever had this feeling that you want to just give up and you want to play anymore? Yeah. I had that probably about, uh, like I said, about three, four years ago. It's okay, don't worry. About three, four years ago, I did want to give up, but uh, I kept playing. Do you have any pregame rituals? Yes. Um, my pregame ritual is I pray. Uh, I tie my left shoe before my right. Uh, <laughs> I am a left-handed, but I shoot right. Um, and then I have the same playlist that I've had probably for about 10 years. So there's a lot of old songs in there, but I still listen to them. <laughs> That's about it. Um, there's all levels of professional basketball. Um, Turkey is the number one uh, level. Uh, so I make enough money to live a comfortable life. Um, in high school, I, I mean, I shot the ball a lot. I think I averaged like 27 and 18 or something. Um, college, uh, maybe like 10 overall. I don't know, maybe 9.8. I don't know, something like that. Uh, professionally, it depends on what type of team I'm on. Um, point average is important. However, if you're on a team with a lot of good players, um, the point average is pretty much spread out, and that's how you win games. So it depends on what type of team I'm on and what I'm needed to do. For example, when I played for Galatasaray, I wasn't really needed to score that much. I mean, I scored, but not that much. And then when I played on a different team, I was needed to shoot almost every shot. So it really honestly depends on what the team needs me to do. I'm not really a shot blocker, so I'm lucky if I get one. <laughs> I'm being honest, and I am really, when I say I'm undersized, I'm really undersized. What? Who are your sponsors? Um, when I'm in Turkey, I'm Adidas, as well as Araya, um, as well as some other Turkish brands. Um, here I was Nike, however, I can't be both, so I am Adidas. Did I play varsity as a freshman? Yes, I did. Okay, she asked which one I like best out of the three, which is the guard, four is the power forward, five is the center. Um, I used to like center because I used to bang, like banging, however, uh, it takes a lot of weird tear on your body. I'm now actually 30, so I don't need that. Um, four and three are kind of a toss up. Um, I like to shoot, so uh, I mean, the three has a little bit less work, so, uh, I do like to shoot, but then I also like to kind of bang when I can. So I would say three, four is a tall set. How did my playing style change after my injury? Um, my jump shot got a lot better. Um, I knew that I couldn't um, be hit and hit as hard as I used to. So yes, my, my jump shot got a lot better and I got a lot more clever. Okay, good question. He asked about um, if, it's some, if it, the injury happened in one time or over time. Um, Probably since middle school, I've had back problems. Um, 
it's gotten better than it's gotten worse, but um, I actually have a very high pain tolerance. Um, so over time, it would get worse and get worse. By the time I reached the professional level, it actually went out and I literally couldn't walk. So over time, not just one hit, but yeah, a long time over time. <laughs> okay, so you picked Rutgers or were you kind of? I knew this was coming. Okay. I know everyone heard, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason I went to Rutgers was because I wanted to start something. Um, UConn had been there, done that. Um, I wanted to be part of an era that started something. So when we went up against them, they were any other team. Um, the time I was at Rutgers, we beat them. So that's all I can say. <laughs> okay, balancing academics and athletics. Um, I slept whenever I could, honestly. Um, and then I went to practice in classes when I wasn't sleeping. Um, I had one of my, we have helpers. They're called red shirts at Rutgers. And they basically help you to form a schedule that you can follow every day. So if I had class, okay, I'll give you an example. Our practice was pretty much from 9 to 12 in the morning. So then we would go to classes up until 9 o'clock at night. So she would say, okay, you're going to practice here. After practice, you're going to you know, grab your lunch here. And if you have class on this campus, you'll go to class. You'll then go to study hall. You'll then go to your next class. You can go back to your room and relax, eat whatever you want to do, study hall. Like this is, this is what she would do. She would plan it out so I didn't really have to think about when I was going to do my work, how long it was going to take. So. When she did that schedule, that's how I, I balanced everything. When you were younger, did you play AU? I did. I played for, uh, I don't know if you guys know, the Philadelphia Bells? They're still around? Okay, yeah, I played for the Philadelphia Bells. They're not around here. We didn't really have any teams around here. How long did it take for you to like, fully adjust your <coughs> schedule in college? It took me a good year. Um, freshman year, it, it was hard. Um, first of all, I came in I, from high school to college. I was, I was overweight, so I had ex extra workouts. So I was doing a 5.30 workout and a 9 o'clock workout, and I was extremely tired. So it took me a good year to adapt. Uh, freshman year, I didn't do so well. I didn't do horrible, but by sophomore year, I was adapted, and uh, I did good. Um, high school, we were very close. Um, I'm not going to say that we all liked each other. I'm not going to say that we all got along off the court. But when we were on the court, we were very close. And uh, we played together and we had each other's backs on the court. Um, college level, that's probably where I met my friends for life. Um, we're all, we all still talk. We don't talk every day. We don't talk every week. Sometimes we talk once a year. But we're all very, very close. We play against each other when we're overseas. So those are pretty much my lifetime friends. Professionally, I have probably a handful um, of friends that are, uh, I'm really close with teammate-wise. I think it depends on the team you're on because you got to remember that um, you're, you're 23, 24, and older. I mean, we have some 40-year-olds. Um, you got kids, you have families, um, so you have a life. So a lot of people, they come, they practice, they leave, they go home to their family. So it's not as close. It's just on the court, you just have to get along. When I went to Turkey, it was hard leaving my family. Um, the first place I went out of college was actually Korea. And uh, I think Korea is a 13 hour time difference. So that was hard. Um, my first trip overseas. Now it's, I mean, I'm gonna miss them, but I mean, I honestly live in Turkey, so. It's kind of, <laughs> I'm there more than I'm here. So it's not so hard anymore, but you know, they come visit as well, so it's okay. <laughs> Before I learned what was needed to play soccer, soccer. And then after I figured out <laughs> what was involved, basketball. <laughs> Like 
Like, the shortest scarf? Yeah. No. <laughs> How tall are you? Okay. I think my, one of my uh, former teammates, her name's Shannon Bobbitt. She's a little bit taller than her, maybe. Maybe an inch. From Tennessee. Tennessee. Yes. There's no height where you can't play basketball. Is it? Okay, do you guys know Muggsy Bogues? Okay, you know he's really short, right? You know he, he can jump like crazy, right? Okay. It, there, there's no height. It's just if, if you're short, I mean, you have to find something to make up for it. So, okay, he asked about post-game routine basically to get my body back and, you know, muscles and everything. Um, after the game, obviously I eat. Um, and then I actually, I'm a vitamin person. So I have certain vitamins, amino acids and uh, BCAAs that I actually take after the game. It's uh, to help you recover quicker. I also have these, uh, it's called Normatec. They're like big old boots, fill up with air, you put them on your legs, you sit there. They fill up, they go down, they fill up, they go down and they recover your legs. Um, and then I have a stem machine, which is called a TENS machine. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's like a, yes. Um, I actually put that on my back, so that's what I do to recover. And sleep. Sleep will recover your body. What do I eat on a normal day? I'm actually, uh, <laughs> no. I, honestly, I do not, I, I, very, very rarely, if it's an emergency, I go to McDonald's, Burger King, any fast food place. I do not like fast food. If I eat it, it actually will make me not feel very good. So fast food is not good for you at all. Um, I'm more of a rice and a um, zucchini person. So I literally can eat that five times a day. Um, I'm not saying you have to eat that, but I'm just saying, I mean, you gotta put some vegetables in there. Yes, I do get nervous. Um, but I think me being nervous is more um, anxious to play and excited to play. But when I am, I uh, put on some calmer music because I do listen to uh, very fast music and that tends to make me a little more round up. So I just put on something calmer. Do I go to church? Um, <laughs> I do attend church. Um, I attend Witherspoon Presbyterian Church. It's in Princeton. I'm 30 years old. How old do you think I was? <laughs> Oh, really? You thought I was 40? Man, how much do I bench? Um, I, don't be I don't lift heavy weights. So I used to. I don't know how much it was back then, but I, I don't lift heavy weights. I honestly do a lot of kettlebell stuff and a lot of running. So everything I do pretty much is my body weight. What's the longest shot you have? Maybe uh, two steps behind the three. Um, <laughs> When I say the three-point line, it's not your three-point line. It's our, our three-point line is, uh, what, four feet back from yours? Yeah. Four feet. I think so. About, yeah, four feet. Good. I think every sports team um, thinks about this in here, and even in classrooms. How important is internal leadership? You know, a coach leads, a teacher leads, but how important is that um, that you experience through high school and, and up through college, the internal leadership on your teams? Um... A coach is always the head of your team, but the coach only sees so much. It's kind of like your parents. You get away with stuff, they don't see it. So uh, I think that when you have somebody on your team that leads by example, plus everybody respects, it helps the team go a lot smoother because you're always going to have different personalities and everyone's not going to get along. So I think it's very important to have somebody on your team who can keep the team together. Uh, how do you fix problems in a team? Um, sometimes you try to sit down and talk it out. Uh, sometimes you gotta put the people who are having problems together. Sometimes you have to do team bonding exercises. And I, it really depends on what type of problem it is. So sometimes if the person is a huge problem, they get dismissed, so. How do you recover emotionally from a tough loss? Um, in sports, um, you have to have a short-term memory. Because if it, it, you're not gonna play that game again. You can't go back in time and you can't make yourself win the game. So when you lose, you forget about it. You move on. You remember, you know, you remember how it feels, but you honestly really just forget about it and move on to the next game. Hobbies. What do I do in my free time? Hobbies. 
Um, deciding if I want to share this with you guys. I like to, uh, I actually horseback ride. That was actually my, uh, this is what I wanted to do, but I ended up getting too tall, so I couldn't do it. Um, I do that actually quite often. I like to travel. I like to read. And obviously, I mean, I like to shop, so those are the things I do. <laughs> All the girls. <laughs> That's funny. It's a hard to find love while you play. Love and basketball. Is it hard to find love while you play? Um, I think that, you know, traveling a lot and um, not being in the States for a long time, I mean, I mean, I think it can make things difficult. However, there's people everywhere, so you're always meeting people, so. Um, I'm going to tell you guys about my, this is my website, by the way. It's michellecampbellhoops.com. And um, I told Dana that I am actually running a clinic on Sunday at West Windsor North. I'm sorry, it's for girls. Um, 7th to 12th grade girls. And it's from 3 to 5. So it's with me for two hours. It's just something I'm doing last, day, last time before I go overseas. I leave next week, so just want to do it real quick. I know a couple of them are going. Maya's going. Jalen, where is Jalen? Right here. Right here. Oh, Jalen's going. So, if you guys would like to come, please come. Everything is on the website, michellecampbellhoops.com. Okay. Thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it.